All right, I think we'll just get right into it. Uh, since we only have a 15 minute slot and I think we are right at the top of the slot. Uh, welcome to a Firefly demo. Uh, I, my name is Andrew Richardson. I am one of the maintainers of Hyperledger Firefly uh, and I'm also an engineer at Kaleido. Uh, we have a booth upstairs, so if you haven't stopped to talk to us about this stuff, uh, definitely stop by this afternoon. We'd love to meet you all more one-on-one. -on -one. Um, if you have not heard us talk about Firefly yet, Firefly is a Web3 super node. It's a set of building blocks and developer tools that sit above your blockchain technology and make it really easy to build applications on top of that, kind of taking all the uh, confusing bits out and just making them really, really easy to work with so that organizations and enterprises and, and users can get to building applications quickly. Um, we've talked a bit in a lot of different panels about the uh, different things Firefly can do. Uh, and this panel in particular, I'm giving a demo to focus specifically on tokens, right? Fungible tokens, non-fungible tokens. They're kind of the bread and butter of um, uh, in most uh, blockchain uh, ecosystems. And Firefly makes it really, really easy to deal with them. So I'm going to jump straight in. Um, and I have started by setting up a local Firefly development environment. Um, Firefly comes with a lot of tools, one of them being a, uh, a command line interface for setting up a local development environment. Makes it really easy to kind of bootstrap and get started with a real blockchain uh, you know, before deploying anything uh, in an actual decentralized system. So what I have here is I've set up three local nodes. These are going to be Geth Ethereum nodes, but we, um, that's just kind of the default, but we support Bezu, we support Fabric. Uh, so what I have here is these three nodes. Uh, and then I have a UI for each one where I can explore what's going on in that node. So this is the Firefly UI. Uh, you can see in the right here, node 0, uh, node 1, and node 2. Uh, and they all, let's see, they are all in a consortium together. So you can see this network map where the nodes all uh, appear as different kind of bubbles in this decentralized network. Uh, so I'm going to start, I'm going to go through both tokens on a private consortium network and on a public Ethereum network. I'm going to start with the private because that's what Firefly 1.0 did. Uh, as we announced yesterday, uh, we've got Firefly 1.1, so we've got some cool stuff in the second half of the demo as well. But starting with um, the enterprise world, I want a private network. I have a couple members, three members here, and I want to mint tokens, uh, either to track um, some form of currency for payment or to track some sort of NFT for tracking assets, maybe moving between corporations. I'm going to start uh, with the Firefly Sandbox, which is another tool that comes out of the box. It's really, really nice for prototyping your use case. Can you guys see the screen OK? I don't know if we can. We can't dim the lights, can we? It's kind of. The dark mode doesn't translate to this uh, screen. Maybe I'll just try making it bigger. Hopefully that's good enough. Um, so I'm going to start in the sandbox on this tokens tab, uh, which basically helps you bootstrap, OK, what are the simple things I can do um, with, with this network? The first thing I have to do is create my token. Firefly has a, a functionality called uh, creating a token pool. It's a pluggable concept. But in the network that I've set up, it's going to mean actually creating an ERC-20 or an ERC-721. Uh, depending on if I want a fungible or non-fungible token. So I'm going to start by uh, creating a fungible token. I'm going to just call it HGF coin. I'll give it a symbol. And I'm going to leave the rest blank, which means that Firefly is going to create me and deploy a new uh, ERC-20 contract. So it shows me the uh, JavaScript SDK code that I could use in an actual application here. But I can also just run the code snippet directly. Uh, I get the events back that tell me the uh, token pool has been created successfully. I can then mint a token in this pool. So I can select the pool. Uh, I'll say I'll mint 100 tokens. Uh, my default ERC-20 has 18 decimals. So when I put in 100 here, the sandbox is helping me out. Thank you. <laughs> now we have the dark mode. <laughs> um, the sandbox is helping me out by actually um, following that 100 with 18 decimals. Um, so you can see kind of the, the uh, parallels between what I want to do and then the code I write uh, and then actually running it and seeing how it executes. So I'm going to run that. I'm going to mint 100 tokens to myself. And now I can go over to the Firefly Explorer and kind of check out what's been happening. This timeline doesn't look as good when you're zoomed in. Um, so this is on node 0, uh, just the last couple things that I've done in my activity timeline. So I created a token pool right, called HGF coin. Uh, that was done by broadcasting a message to all the members. Broadcast messages are a combination of on and off chain messaging. So Firefly kind of abstracts that out. Whenever you want to share a piece of data with everyone in the network, 
it broadcasts it to them, it puts the public portion of it in IPFS, and then writes a blockchain transaction pointing to it. Uh, so all of these members are going to have a token pool confirmed message and a token transfer confirmed. Uh, if I look in their timelines, they all have that token pool confirmed, token transfer confirmed. Uh, so the whole network gets a notification that these things have happened. And then if I go to the tokens dashboard, I can see uh, the balances. So my account now has 100 of the HDF coin. And that's available to anyone in the network to see. I can then do a transfer. So if I want to take that coin and transfer it to another recipient, um, how about we transfer it uh, to someone off the network, uh, transfer it to my MetaMask wallet? Because you can, uh, you're probably familiar with MetaMask for tracking your, your Ethereum balances and such. So I'm actually going to take uh, and find my token pool and get the token details. Here's the address where that ERC20 was, dis was uh, deployed. I can go in here and tell MetaMask, hey, import this token. It actually reads the data from the ERC20 for the HGF coin. Import. And then I'll go back, get my MetaMask address, and I will use the sandbox transfer to that address. I'll give 10 of the tokens to that address. And actually, instead of running this one directly, I'll show you how easy it is to bootstrap an application. I've here set up a very simple uh, Node.js application, right? And I want to transfer tokens as part of this application. Uh, I can just take that code snippet and uh, put it right in here. I'll log the return so we can see that it succeeded. And then if I run this, it's going to run that code snippet and it functions exactly as we've been seeing on the sandbox. It gives me an ID for my request so I could check on the status of it, but I think it's confirmed by this point. So I can just go back to my token dashboard and see 90 are in my account, 10 have been transferred to another account, and there the 10 are in MetaMask. So very, very easy to both you know, bootstrap your commands and then go straight to source code and start writing your application and your business use case. Uh, very much the same for non-fungible. So uh, before we move off of the consortium, I'll show you just exactly how to do it with non-fungible. Switch this over. I'll say, we'll call this one HDF NFT. Uh, I'm again going to leave this blank to tell it to deploy a new contract. In this case, it's going to deploy an ERC721. And once it's deployed, it's going to send a message to all the members of that consortium saying, you know, here's a new ERC721. The symbol is this. The address is this. Uh, and everyone implicitly is going to add that. So here's my node 0. Here's my node 1. Not dashboard for blockchain. Dashboard for tokens. I have two pools. I have my HGF coin. I have my HGF NFT. Right? So very, very simple to not only do the blockchain operations, but kind of do the off-chain stuff that you also need to do in this multi-party consortium to make sure everyone's in agreement ab about the, uh, the constructs that are in play. Uh, let's see. We can go ahead and do another mint. Uh, when you're minting an NFT, there's a construct called a token index. And we've picked, tried to pick kind of generic names for these things because they can map to different smart contracts differently. But in this case, it's you know, the individual uh, identifier for the NFT that you want to mint. And everyone has to be unique. You can't mint the same one twice. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and mint. We'll just mint token 1001. Uh, and why don't we do another one in the source code just for some variety. So I'll put this in here. This is actually going to be called mint. So I'm uh, going to mint an NFT here. Uh, it's going to go into my uh, default node wallet. And if I go back to Firefly Explorer, go to my balances, I see that my wallet now has NFT number 1001 for this HGF NFT pool. Transferring, of course, uh, is just as easy. And I think this time, let's see. I'll transfer it to another member of the network. So let's say I'm going to transfer it to org1. So I'm going to get his Ethereum address for his wallet. So by default, each node comes in with a single Ethereum wallet. You can add to that, and you can kind of layer on top any other native Ethereum technologies. But everyone gets a default wallet. So I'm just going to use that here. Uh, so this is the address for uh, org1. I'm going to give this token to him. And this time, I'm going to attach a message. Um, this is another really powerful thing that Firefly allows you to do uh, by sending a message alongside the token. Uh, because we find a lot of times, if you're transferring an NFT, you're transferring some tokens, you want to include some data with it to say the reason for the transfer or such. Um, but often, you don't want to put that stuff actually on the blockchain. 
So this gives me a way to send an off-chain message, but to pin a proof of that message alongside the token transfer on-chain. So I'll say, uh, thanks for attending. Say maybe this was a, a digital swag for coming to my panel, right? I'm going to transfer it from org 0 to org 1, and I'm going to make sure it's only visible to org 1 and not to org 2. So I get a slightly bigger code snippet for that, and I'm going to go ahead and run it. There we go. Uh, if I go on node 0, go back to my tokens dashboard, I can see there's been a transfer. And because I'm the sender of this, I can also see that there's a message attached to that transfer. If I click through to the message, uh, the value of the message is down here. This value could be string, JSON, files, whatever. I'm just kind of using something simple for the sake of time. Uh, and org1 also uh, similarly can see the transfer here uh, and can see the message. But uh, org2, uh, the, because it was a private message, they can uh, see the transfer. But if they try to see the message, uh, it's not available. Right? So the message is off-chain. It was not delivered. It's not shared publicly on the blockchain. Just one last thing, and then maybe we'll have a couple uh, minutes for questions, because I did promise that I would also show public chain, which is kind of the exciting thing that is new in Firefly 1.1. So I'm going to hop back over and show you on node 0, I actually have added an additional namespace. And this means it's a separate space for me to talk to potentially different blockchains. Um, I have added a, a, a connector to Polygon Mumbai testnet. So this particular node is going to be talking to that testnet. There's no tokens here now. But I have a token contract here that Nico deployed yesterday as part of a demo. So I'm going to reuse that. I'm going to say that I'm going to create a token pool using that. And I will grab the starting block when that contract was created. Generate myself a code snippet. And it is a fungible ERC20, and I think it's called FFC for Firefly Coin. I'm going to copy this code snippet, come back to my source, because uh, there's one other thing I have to do. And that is to change my namespace to go to the Polygon namespace. And you can see just how easy it is uh, to talk to a different namespace, different blockchain, using the same constructs I've been using for the rest of the panel. This one's going to take a little bit longer because uh, it's submitting to a public testnet. There we come. We got that. Probably take a few more seconds to get the actual confirmation. Uh, but let's see. There it is. OK, so my token pool is gonna, has been created. It's going to start indexing that. Um, and we should eventually see some transfers here. We'll see. It might take a few minutes. But it's going to go back. Um, I told it the from block where that was created. It's going to start there and crawl through and, and index all the ERC-20 transfers. And it's as easy as that to do it private or public. So I think that is the end of the content. A bunch of things I just showed. So uh, we have a few minutes. Uh, if you have any questions uh, or anything else you wanted to see, yeah. The ledger, so you would see all of the blockchain transactions, of course, which in this case, all the token mints and transfers are all going to be public, right? You can see all of those. Um, and then the messaging, you would just see basically hashes of any of the message data, right? Firefly, the way it's configured, we don't put um, rich data on the chain. We put data off chain and we put a hash to prove. We could get into that for a long time. I, I would contend that in a lot of enterprises, you actually want auditability of the fact that the transfer happens. You may want to obfuscate the sender and receiver using something like HD wallets um, so that the uh, Ethereum address can't be traced to a single party. Um, and, and many other options we could get into and would love to kind of have a more extended discussion. But yeah, short answer is usually we find that it's it, it's actually beneficial to have the transfers themselves in the public chain. So the answer is no, you don't have the privacy. Uh, not as it exists now. Yeah. You, yeah, I guess. Andrew, I think we should qualify that Firefly itself, as of today, the implementation only supports um, public transfers uh, because the ERC20, 749, those are implementation built in. But it's a sensible uh, system, right? Yeah, I guess the, the bottom line with any Firefly question is, but it's pluggable. So if you wanted to plug in Tessera or plug in something with Fabric or, you know, then you can write the plug. plug. Right, yeah. exactly. Any others? Yeah. You mentioned you were connecting to a private network. How do you select the network? 
So I set up a, a, a private network here, and it's running entirely on my machine, right? So I have Gethnode and, and everything kind of for three members. Uh, so this sandbox is pointed at the private network, which is why I did the public ones in, in source code to point it elsewhere. Uh, it's in the API call is, I guess, the short answer that you tell it which, which exact um, namespace to talk to. And in this case, I didn't go through the setting up and the configuration of the namespace because it's kind of dry and a bunch of YAML. Um, but yeah, you, you tell it, you know, okay, these are the, the um, API endpoints to talk to for talking to my private network. This is where my P2P data exchange is. This is where my blockchain is. And, and similarly for the public network. Any, maybe one more? I think we're just about it. Yeah. Uh, can the recipient review the token? Um, you could if you kind of implemented a custom smart contract, right? I've shown a very simple ERC-20 contract here. But yeah, the, the limits of the contract are up to you, right? So if you, if you create your own ERC-20, as long as it conforms to a contract that Firefly understands or a contract that you teach Firefly to understand by plugging it in, um, then... It, you know, the contract will still behave however you've prescribed it. So you could add your own access controls and, you know, approvals and rejects and all that could be in there. Uh, and as long as it still emits ERC-20, ERC-721, or ERC-1155 events, or anything else that Firefly acquires in the future, Firefly will know how to index it. I think, are we at time? All right. Well, I think with that, we'll stop. I'm rolling right into another demo, so feel free to stick around for the next one, but we wanted to time box them into two different sections. Um, and of course, we'll be upstairs at the booth uh, tonight and at, at the Guinness Storehouse, so stop and uh, chat if you want to have a longer talk about it.